So last time we talked about how to use the range and endurance equations to estimate the fuel fractions used during cruise and loiter segments of a mission profile, but both of those required an estimation of the lift to drag ratio for the aircraft. So now we'll turn our attention to how we might estimate that L over D both for cruise and loiter at this very conceptual design stage. So first, just remember that L over D is a measure of an aircraft's aerodynamic efficiency. Because we want to generate lift, and the necessary consequence is the generation of drag. And this is highly dependent on the exact aircraft configuration. So our focus here will be on subsonic flight, and then L over D is most affected by two factors. The wingspan and the wetted area. Now, for level flight, so that's cruise or loiter, the lift just equals the weight, so L over D actually depends only on the drag. So there's two main sources of subsonic drag. For a, a 3D aircraft. The first is what's called induced drag. And this is caused by the generation of lift, and we'll discuss this later on in the course when we talk about 3D wings. And this is mainly a function of wingspan, or more specifically, aspect ratio of the wings. And the second factor is parasitic drag. This is also called zero lift drag, and it's everything that isn't the induced drag. So this is mainly skin friction, but also includes any pressure drag, as we talked about with 2D airfoils. So this mainly depends on the area, the surface area of the aircraft that's exposed to air. This is what we call, call the wetted area. So the aspect ratio, just to define these, is the wingspan squared over some wing reference area. For a rectangular wing, it's just a span over the cord. Now, a typical range for uh, the aspect ratio is from about 3 to about 8. But it's possible to have values going anywhere from 1 to about 30. For our initial design estimate, we can use some historical empirical data to uh, estimate the aspect ratio based on the type of aircraft. Uh, that we're considering, and in class we'll do an example related to this. The other part of the picture is the wetted area. And here we can write this non-dimensionally as S wet over the reference area S ref. And so we use this non-dimensional wetted area, as well as the aspect ratio to estimate L over D. So this depends mostly on configuration of the aircraft and this is just the aspect ratio.
Now, there's a figure in Raymer, which is also in the notes, which I, I won't recreate here, um, that just gives an idea of some of the wetted area ratios for different kinds of aircraft. Just to give you a couple of ideas for a B-47 bomber. S wet over S ref is about eight for a seven forty seven. It's about six and a half. And for a fighter like an F four, it's about four. Now when we combine the two factors, the wetted area ratio and the aspect ratio, we, bit, we get something called the wetted aspect ratio. Which is just the span squared over uh, S ref times S ref over S wet so that it's span squared over S wet. Typically, the designer of the aircraft chooses an aspect ratio and a type of configuration, and then from that determines the wetted area ratio. From that, it's possible to get an L over D estimate. Using both a chart for the configuration with the examples I've given here, as well as a chart of L over D max against this wetted aspect ratio. This figure is also included in the notes, um, but just to give you an idea of where some values might fall on this, one, two, L over D may be going up to 20. Um, for a civilian transport aircraft, uh, we'd be looking at being somewhere in this region. So basically, for each type of configure of aircraft configuration, there will be one of these curves on this chart. And you can use this to come up with your L over D estimate. Now, since drag varies with altitude, based on the density and the speed of sound changing, as well as the velocity through the Mach number, for a given altitude, there's a certain velocity for which L over D is maximized. So for reasons that are beyond the scope here for me to explain, but there's some explanation in the MIT Open Courseware notes, we can get the most efficient velocities as follows. For either cruise, or loiter for a jet aircraft or a propeller aircraft zero point eight six six times L over D max 
loiter, we use L over D max. Whereas for a propeller, aircraft, at cruise, we have L over D max. And at loiter, we have 0.866 L over D max. So these are the velocities that correspond to these drag, uh, lift to drag ratios are what will be used at these different conditions. So we can use these values with the above um, data, so from here or the, using the complete chart, um, and this procedure then to estimate the lift to drag ratio. We'll do this uh, in more detail in a class example. So now all the pieces are in place and all the mission segment weight fractions can now be estimated. So we can now get Wx, which is x mission segments, over W0, which is for the total mission. Now, recall that this simple estimation method we're using right now doesn't allow for um, weight drops. So all the weight change is due to fuel burn. So then the mission fuel fraction is 1 minus Wx over W0. Now if we assume a typical value for the reserved and trapped fuel of 6%, then Wf over W0, which is what we seek, is 1.06. 1 minus Wx over W0. Now we can iteratively solve to get the takeoff weight as follows. So to start, we guess the takeoff weight. W0. From this, we estimate the empty weight fraction, then calculate the resulting W0 and W fuel, and check does the calculated W0 equal the guest W0. If the answer is yes, we're done. If the answer is no, update the estimate of W0. Typically using the mean of the calculated and previously guessed values. And we do that until we achieve a converged uh, value of the takeoff weight.